I gave a talk at the BOPA conference recently outlining the newer changes within pediatrics. And I think the main take home messages were that we're using a lot more antibody and precise medicine therapy at the moment. Um, and that's probably our biggest um, uh, move forward in pediatric therapy. We've gone a lot away from um, the conventional chemotherapy, which we have always used and relied upon in, in pediatrics, but these newer agents now um, are much more accessible to peds. And that's partly because we've got lots of genetic testing, um, which is equivalent to what adults are now getting. So every tumor um, gets pretty much um, its uh, markers tested for. So we can do a lot more targeted therapies. Immunotherapies are exactly the same. They're targeting um, the aberrations on the tumors itself. So we're using a lot of linatumumab and linatuzumab, linatuximab for neuroblastoma. Um, the other changes are more along um, the, the sheer number and volume of clinical trials we've got going for pediatrics now, which is fantastic because, as you imagine, pediatric cancer is a really small area. Um, and then if you take each of the disease states within it, it's even smaller. So the numbers are tiny, in fact. Um, so there's lots of international collaboration and trials which um, are now being uh, av made available across um, the UK, whether it's just at a couple of centres and then centres are, are essentially um, referring to the to the site that has the trial open um, or it's, you know, the, the major trials are across a number of primary treatment centres in the UK. Um, we're also seeing the introduction of proton beam therapy for pediatric patients, which is fantastic because if you think survivorship is a real thing now for, for pediatric patients, we really need to be protecting them for when they grow older. So proton beam therapy is one of the ways where we're reducing conventional radiotherapy and giving them more targeted um, and only to the areas that they need it to kind of uh, radiotherapy and UCLH opening shortly is going to be fantastic for the patients in the south of the country. Um, I could go on about the actual therapies itself, but I think it's also important to note that we've got lots of supportive care that's new. So, for example, we're using dexrazoxane, which essentially is a cardioprotectant and using that for any patients who are having anthracycline exposure, because obviously, again, um, for long term follow up of these children, anyone who's got anything that, that affects the heart um, we do need to follow them up for longer, ensure they don't have any long lasting effects. And, and exosoxane has recently been um, certified as safe in pediatric patients. So we are trying to use that in combination as much as possible. The other main one to, to talk about is something called STS. Now, it is um, an agent that is uh, useful as a cardio, as a, sorry, a, an autotoxicity protectant. So drugs such as cisplatin can cause long-term and irreversible hearing loss. And STS can actually prevent this. And it was um, uh, looked at within a trial for hepatoblastoma. And as a result, the company who ran these trials are now allowing use of it in a compassionate use basis for any patient who's using S um, cisplatin in hepatoblastoma. So that is absolutely brilliant. And we're seeing... Um, good outcomes for, for those patients as well. And then the final one really is we're moving much more towards um, TDMs and PK monitoring for chemotherapy agents. Because if you imagine pediatric patients, it's difficult to know how they will handle chemotherapy and how they'll clear the drugs. Um, and especially in the neonates, we know that their creatinine clearance and or the kidney function is very different to um, a child age between four and 12, for example. So when we've got a trial open that's looking at carboplatin PK monitoring, and they've actually introduced a whole list of other agents now as well. So any ch child less than three months old, we're able to send off PK monitoring to see um, have we given them a, a toxic dose or are we under treating because um, we have idea of what AUC we're targeting. So I'd say those are probably our main changes and updates.